In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. George Washington Carver was an American agricultural scientist and inventor who promoted alternative crops and methods to prevent soil depletion. One of the most prominent black scientists at the beginning of the 20th century. Also a warm-hearted, humble Christian. It says he once came to God and said, Lord, there are so many secrets in the universe. Please show me some of these secrets. God said, George, this universe is too big for you. I want you to take a peanut and start with that. Take a peanut and start with that. Now George Washington Carver prayerfully began to investigate the mysteries of peanut. It is said that most popular of his 44 practical bulletins, which he wrote for the farmers, contained 105 food recipes using peanuts. It means using peanuts, he came up with 105 food recipes. And Carver always believed that he could have faith both in God and science and integrated them in his life. He testified on many occasions that it is because of his faith in Jesus was the only mechanism by which he could effectively pursue and perform the art of science. And whenever he began his work or whenever he started his speaking, he used to quote this, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. The verse that we read this morning from the book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 14. The theme that is derived from the four passages that we read this morning is understanding the ways of God. Looking at that topic, we can come up with a question. How can a spiritual human being understand the things or the ways of God which a natural man cannot conceive or perceive? The first passage was taken from 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 5 to 9. There is a title given to that passage saying that King Solomon prayed for wisdom. He prayed, God answered, granted him wisdom and discernment to rule and judge over his people, also gave some bonus, which he never asked. That was riches and honor. When you come down in the same chapter, which was not part of our reading, we see that along with the wisdom and the discernment, King Solomon was given a warning to listen, to seek God in personal conduct and heart obedience. First Kings chapter 3 verse 14, which says, If you will go my way, keep my statutes and my commandments as your father David did, then I will lengthen your days. We sometimes wonder about King Solomon who prayed and God granted him wisdom and discernment to rule, to judge. But then we find him failing. And the reason for Solomon's failure was that he did not listen to or fully receive God's will. He did not go God's way. God was actually asking King Solomon to primarily be wise concerning his heart, his conduct, and his behavior. 
And King Solomon in all his lifetime was busy judging, dealing people, handling them, never caring about his own heart, his own behavior. And that resulted him going far from God and failing in his life. God's wisdom. I think the best definition and the detail about it is given in the book of Job, chapter 28, verses 17 to 28. Summarizing it, says gold and glass cannot equal wisdom, nor can it be exchanged for jewels or vessels of fine gold. The possession of wisdom is even above rubies and pearls. And lastly, it says, behold, reverential and worshipful fear of the Lord. That is wisdom. So the first point that we can derive from this passage, 1 Kings chapter 3, is if you want to understand the ways of the Lord, is through wisdom and discernment. The best way to say is reverential and worshipful fear of the Lord helps us to understand him better. And we thank God for the divine liturgy that we celebrate and all the liturgies that we have in the church which helps to understand the things and the ways of God. Psalm 19 verses 7 to 14. It talks about the scripture intake. The scripture intake helps us to understand the words of God. One of the best things about the scripture is, Bible says, God talks. Our God is not silent. He speaks. This Psalm 19 best describes how God communicates with human beings. The first part of Psalm 19 tells us that God speaks through nature. The heavens declare the glory of the Lord. The second half of the psalm, which we read this morning, tells us that God speaks through his scripture, the word, the Bible. And combining both, let me say like this, God speaks to us through the skies and through the scripture. The heavens declares the glory of God very clearly, but in order to truly know God and to communicate with him, to know his ways, we need the clarity of the scriptures. We can see the power of God by looking at his creation, by looking at the sky. But we can only know God personally through his return word. His nature feeds, strengthens, and supports our outer life, our outer human being. But it is his word that deals with our inner life. And if we want to understand the ways of God using the scriptures, someone told there are five practical steps. Number one, read it. Get a plan to read the scripture once in a year and make a schedule to read it regularly every day. Second, reflect upon it. Meditate on it. And let us see what God is speaking to us through the scripture. Third, remember it. Remind ourselves always through the scripture verses, especially in the difficult situations that go through. Let the scripture encourage our hearts. Fourth, recount it. Share the scripture, narrate the scripture, witness the word through our lives. The fifth and the last one, respond to it. Let us not be just the reading readers or the hearers of the word, but let us be the doers of the word too. The third passage was taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 14 till chapter 3, verse 9. Understanding the ways of the God by having the mind of Christ. A natural man cannot understand the things or the ways of God because they are spiritually discerned. And Apostle Paul talks about three categories of human beings. First is 
a natural man or a natural human being, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, who is patterned after Adam and rejects the things of the spirit. The second category is the spiritual man, a spiritual human being. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15, who knows the things of God. The third thing is the carnal man, carnal human being. And there is a lot of debate around that can there be a such thing called carnal Christian? How can be a Christian carnal? And someone defined like this, the carnal Christian is a child of God on his way to heaven, but he is traveling in third class. A child of God traveling to heaven, but traveling in third class. That reminds me about an illustration of a man who worked hard, arranged enough money to purchase a ticket to travel by ship from one country to another country, crossing an ocean. It was during those days when there were no flights available. And it usually took two to three weeks to travel from this part of the ocean to the other part. He started his journey. He knew that he had no sufficient money to buy food on the ship. He purchased a suitcase and filled it with biscuits. And while on the ship, when everyone went to the dining hall to have that delicious meal, he sits on the corner having his biscuits. It began to happen day after day. And when it was time for him to reach to the other part of the ocean, one of his roommates asked him, Sir, I was noticing that every day when we go to the dining hall for meals, you sit in the corner and have biscuits. Why don't you come to the dining hall and eat with us? And this traveler says, Brother, to tell you the truth, I had only enough money to buy the ticket. I don't have any extra money to purchase the meals. These other passengers raised his eyebrows in surprise, shook his head and said, Sir, don't you realize that meals are included in the price of the ticket? Your meals had already been paid for. Carnal Christians are similar to their traveler. They are missing out on God's best because they don't realize that good things of life had already been paid for. The members of the church of Corinth thought themselves as spiritual. But the problems that they had in their human relationship clearly demonstrated that they had some problem in relationship with God. Carnality, jealousy, argument and fight with people are not just the sins. But then, these were the sins that were very much visible in the life of the Christians at Corinth. Please know that as Christians, we have a higher calling than the rest of the humanity, as Paul mentions that we have this mind of Christ. So we are called to live at another plane, at a higher plane. And we must walk that spiritual path that Jesus walked with that same humble mind and same teachable disposition that was displayed in the life of Christ Jesus our Lord so that we can have access to the mind of our Lord Jesus Christ. So point three is having the mind of Christ to know the plans and the ways and the things of God. And that brings us to the gospel passage taken from St. Matthew chapter 16 verses 5 to 12. Jesus Christ was using the word leaven in a figurative sense, especially to emphasize on hypocrisy and the, fall, and the teachings of Pharisees and the Sadducees. You know what they did? They were spiritual people. But then they mixed God's truth with man's traditions. That image of leaven something small but then overnight kept for a period of time it becomes visible it affects the whole dough on in which it is mixed in the same way the hypocrisy and the false teachings of this world 
would appear small in the beginning. But when it spreads, it will quickly affect the thought process of individuals that could corrupt our hearts and minds away from the true meaning of God's word and his commandments. Now through this passage, Jesus Christ is reminding us to avoid the leaven of the world at all cost. And allow us to follow him who is a true and pure leaven who can change us and transform us into beautiful creations of God. He is reminding us to avoid all forms of hypocrisy in our lives. And we be true to, to God who knows our heart. We read that in 1 Samuel chapter 15 verse 7. Now how can we do that? It's just through humility. By allowing humility and love through repentance to overcome us and grow in us. Allow this humility and love to function as leaven in our life so that it can grow and spread in and through us. We have to follow Christ, his teachings, his principles for spiritual living so that we can become like him, Theosis. So the fourth point of Knowing and understanding the ways and things of God is by following him, by becoming like him, and by partaking in him. And as a closing statement, let me mention this. Why we should be foolish to settle for a row level of this world when we have the privilege to participate in the bread of life that is the Christ himself. Let me repeat again why we should become foolish by following the raw leaven of this world when we have the opportunity and the privilege to participate and partake in the bread of life, the Christ himself. And today we have that privilege to partake in the body and the blood of Christ by participating in this Holy Eucharist. Let us take a moment, prepare ourselves and make a commitment that we will not become foolish by following or accepting this role leaven of this world, but then partake and participate and will make use of the privilege to partake in the bread of life.